In this video, I am going to show you how to set up a Gaussian calculation that will use a pseudo potential and different basis sets for different atoms. This often happens when I need to do calculations on a transition metal complex when I want to apply a different basis set and use effective core potential for the metal atom and different basis sets for all other atoms. So in here, I'm going to set up a structure optimization for iron hexacarbonyl. So first I have drawn uh, the iron hexacarbonyl in my view window. Then I will go to calculate Gaussian calculation setup. For the job type, I will choose optimization and frequency. For methodology, I will use DFT B3LYP and for the basis set, choose Gen ECP. We also want to use uh, an additional keyword, GF input. So this is a keyword I like to use uh, anytime I am using custom generated basis sets. So what the keyword is going to do is to print the basis set in the input file or in the output file that is being used for the calculation. That way I know that I have defined my basis sets properly. Next I will go to title. Um, I will call this calculation iron 2 hexacarbonyl. Next go to link 0. We can specify memory 2 gigabytes and use one shared processor. Go to general and in here I'm going to uncheck write connectivity. Connectivity information is not something I really need in my input file for electronic structure calculation. So I'm going to um, just uncheck this. Next I need to add additional input. So I will click on add input and this is the place where we are going to define the basis sets and the effective core potential for all our atoms. So in the first section I will define the basis set. I will start with the iron atom. So I will write Fe for iron 0 and I want to use SDD basis set and pseudo potential. So I write SDD for stars. Next, I'm going to define basis set for carbon and oxygen. So in here, I'd like to use a triple zeta popo basis set and I want to use the same basis set for carbon and oxygen. So I will write carbon, oxygen, zero, and 6311 G star and finish the section by four stars. Next, I need to define a pseudo potential. I will need to leave one blank line between the basis set definition and the pseudo potential definition. And then I will define a pseudo potential for iron by typing Fe0 and I want to use SDD pseudo potential here. And I leave a couple of blank lines. Okay, so this first section defines the basis set and the second section after the blank line defines the pseudo potential I want to use. Click on preview uh, to see the entire input file. Um, so you can see uh, this is our root section with the keyboards setting the memory and the number of processors. Then comes the section with the charge multiplicity and I actually made a mistake in here uh, because I want to do calculations on a 2 plus complex, right? This is iron 2 hexacarbonyl. So I need to go back to method and adjust charge to 2 plus. Okay, go back to preview. Okay, so now the charge is 2, a spin multiplicity is 1, so this is a singlet. Then comes the section with the x, y, z coordinates and the section with basis set definitions. So you can see I have XYZ coordinates, 
one, exactly one blank line, section that defines the basis set, one blank line, and a section that defines the pseudo potential. So now I can go ahead and I can submit the calculation. Once the calculation is done, I can check whether this basis set definition worked in my output file. So I have already performed the calculation ahead of time. And here is the output file, the log file for this calculation. In the log file, look for the line that says general basis read from cards. So this is the start of the basis set uh, definition section in the log file. You can see that now I have a section with pseudo potential parameters, the center number one, atomic number 26. So this is the section that tells me about the iron atom. And you can see that the pseudo potential was successfully read from the input file. All other atoms, um, my carbons and oxygens, they do not have a pseudo potential defined. Since I have included the GF input keyword, now I can see in the log file basis set definition for each of the atoms. So it starts with atom one, which is the iron atom. Um, so it printed out SDD basis set for you. Atom number two is carbon. This is um, the 6311. G star basis set for carbon atom, and so on. So this is how you set up calculation using split basis sets, different basis sets for different atoms, as well as a pseudo potential.